The UN peacekeeping mission in Mali said Sunday it had brought forward its withdrawal from a base in the north of the country due to the deteriorating security conditions. During the operation, three of its soldiers were wounded when they came under fire, the force added a few hours later. The MINUSMA forces' departure from Bia comes after the Malian army said Saturday that six soldiers died and 24 fighters from armed terrorist groups were killed in a skirmish in the area Friday. Former rebels from the Tuareg ethnic group also said the army and the Russian mercenary group Wagner had attacked their forces Friday in Bia. Minusma has expedited its withdrawal from Bia due to the deteriorating security situation in the area and the high risk posed to our brew helmets, the force said Sandy on Twitter. The number of troops involved or details on the original departure date were not specified. In a message posted later Sunday, the force added the Minusma convoy that withdrew from Bia today was attacked twice, adding that three wounded peacekeepers had been evacuated to Timbuktu for treatment. Attacks against peacekeepers can constitute war crimes under international law, the statement added. Mali's army in a statement issued Sunday evening said it had taken possession of the Bia camp after numerous incidents had marred the Mali's military junta says it would need about $600 million to hold elections, but critics say such an amount may be an excuse for the junta not to arrange a vote that would return the country to civilian rule. The Economic Community of West African States ECOWAS has urged the region's military-led countries, Burkina Faso, Guinea, and Mali, to return to democratic rule within 24 months. Fayami Limono is the leader of the opposition Liberal Bloc Party in Guinea. He tells me that he has met with the junta and that the $600 million cost is probably an estimate based on various scenarios. I went to some meetings with uh, the Prime Minister as well as with uh, the Minister of Territorial Administration. We got that figure, but from the document that we received, it seemed to me that uh, it is an estimate based on different hypotheses. One of the hypotheses is that if the parliamentary elections are held and voters are only those living inside the country, they estimated the budget for that. If we have to have elections in 25 more countries where you have Guineans, they have estimated also that figure. And if we add it like 35 other countries, there is another estimate. So. The 600 million is like uh, the most expensive hypothesis that give that figure. Otherwise, I don't think that uh, we need uh, 500 or, or even 400 million dollars to go through the process, taking us back to constitutional life. Did uh, anyone, for example, the ECOWAS or anyone else promise the military junta that they will give the military some money to hold election. I'm asking this question because um, there are those who say that uh, perhaps the military is trying to avoid having election. I mean, you remember at the beginning of uh, this transitional period, political and social actors were debating about uh, how long this transition is going to last. We were about to agree on 36 months, which would have been three years period. It was exactly at that time that Ecovers sent the experts to negotiate with the junta and the government. They agreed upon the 24 months. And according to the government, Ecovers has promised to uh, work and get the money from partners. Now, what we've been hearing is like uh, nobody is doing anything. During our meeting with the Minister of Territorial Administration, we have seen that the government has funded 
some of the activities. But what is missing is more than what the government has to do. So in some way, ECOWAS has to its part with the international community as they have given their word to the junta. Faya Milimono is the leader of the Liberal Bloc Party of Guinea. He was speaking with us from the capital, Conakry. Seven News May Opposition All People's Congress, the APC Party, says that some non-governmental organizations are making overtures for possible talks with the government. The Commonwealth Secretary General earlier this month offered to facilitate a peaceful and constructive dialogue. Since the country's June 24th election, the APC has rejected the results and refused to participate at any level of governance because it says the government tampered with the count to hand itself the majority. Sidi Yaya Tunis is the APC National Publicity Secretary. He tells me that the APC has met with the Inter-Religious Council and the Commission for Peace and National Cohesion. They wanted to hear firsthand from us what our problems were with the elections process and the violations that we felt we had to go through as a party before the elections, during the elections, and after the elections. And so they wanted to see how they can also come in to facilitate possible dialogue. We were able to provide them, you know, some of our concerns he also directed them to some of the incidents that happened not only in our party office in Freetown, but in other areas across the country. So um, you talk about your concerns. There was an election that the election commission said uh, President Madabio won, and your party, the APC, has been protesting. What are the concerns Well, you know, after um, the elections, the APC put forward certain demands. For example, they demanded the resignation of the Electoral Commissioner, Chief Justice, the Inspector General of Police, as well as the Chief of Defense Staff. But more importantly, also, they asked for the disaggregated data, elections result, by polling stations to be published by the Electoral Commission of Sierra Leone. The party demanded that a rerun be done in six months because they are not satisfied with the results as announced by the Chief Electoral Commissioner and that for now the party will boycott governance until these demands are met, especially that which has to do with the publication of our elections results by polling stations. The president has said uh, he's willing to form a commission to look into the conduct of Sierra Leone elections. Well, um, we have not had direct talks with the government yet, uh, with President Bio's uh, team. Like we have always stated, the demands that we put forward really had nothing to do with President Bio or the SLPP. Our problems are with uh, specific institutions of the state, which is why our demands were really directed to those institutions. And uh, whatever interventions that are going to happen, we are very much aware that, uh, you know, for some of those to be met, there has to be some amount of interventions. And that is why we have always maintained as a party.